Shot327, if you've been around this channel long enough, you know I've got a weakness for S10s. I just picked this one up, $500. That's like 300 for the body, 200 for the tires and wheels. So the daughter, she's a clean freak. She's already started washing on it. Says it would be fun to wash. So she didn't clean the inside. We'll get to that. Anyway, I did clean out the bed. So the bed is 99% rust free. I'm impressed. So I'm out with a shop vac. I got the passenger side almost clean. The carpet looks pretty good. Here's what the interior turned out looking like. Got to put the door panels on. Maybe paint that black. Carpet looks good. Some kind of gray blanket over the seat. New windshield. Clean that window. Put the door panel on. And good news, this one's going faster than the last time I did it. Last time, it took about a year to get all the parts together. I've had the truck about two weeks. And then today, I found this engine and this transmission. Got to take it for a test drive before we pulled it out of his truck. Uh, the engine, it fired right up, no smoke, good oil pressure, ran smooth, the transmission shifted smooth. $500 for the transmission, $500 for the engine, $500 for a truck, I'm seeing a theme here. And then he threw in these covers that go on the engine, some paperwork, this electric fan, the bracket for the computer, the air filter housing, and those motor mounts. I don't know if they'll work or not, but I've got them. Update on the truck, last night, keeping with the $500 theme, well, almost $500, $460. I got two grills. If we go up to the front, there's a third grill. I'm actually thinking about using that one. I got this radiator with two fans. It was a broke fan. This one is a replacement fan. It's slightly smaller, but I think I can make it work. I got two motor mounts. I've got two headers. And then here is a shot of the hood. This is exactly what I wanted. This is a metal hood. You can tell by the rust. It's a two inch cowl. It bolts on. It's got a latch on the front. Exactly what I needed. I got the hood sitting in place. I love it. Anyway, today's goal, I want to get the hood off, get the front fenders off, get the radiators part of the way, start cleaning up the frame, maybe paint the frame. In the uh, bed, this is where I'm keeping all my stuff organized, and now you can see it better now that it's out in the sun. I just took the broom and some water and washed up that emblem. The front clip has been removed. My next step, I want to clean up the frame. So I just hit the truck with a little bit of degreaser, a little bit of scraper, some pressure washer, a little bit of wire brush. I think that's good enough. Once it dries, we're going to spray a little paint in there, get the motor mounts in, then we can start putting the engine in. I went ahead and pulled the bed off. It was really easy because there was no bolts holding on. It was just sitting in place. Me and the boys, we lifted it off, put it on that little trailer. So I've got the hitch sitting on there comparing the width of the frame. And what's, why, what's weird to me, the S10 frame is wider than the full size F150 frame. I think I can make it work. I just pressure wash and clean the frame. I'm waiting for that to dry while we're waiting. I'm gonna do a little modification to this hitch. So I just put on some Ospo rust treatment. When that dries, we'll be able to paint this guy. So driver's side using the fuel line access hole, I've got a piece of masking tape. There's a nut and a lock washer on there. Let's see if it'll fit through. That one looks like it's gonna be easy. I think we can make that work. This one might be a challenge. I think I gotta find a shorter wrench. I found some nice short wrenches, but one is a five eighths, one's a half inch. Not what I need. I did find this one. It's a medium long wrench. Put the nut in the hole. Let me grab some tape. Now I gotta put the grommet back on for my fuel lines, so I want those rattling. And we're gonna move over to the other side. So here on the driver's side, I took a small bit, made a hole here, then made a little bigger, then made a little bit bigger. Then I took my grinder, made a line here, made a line there, took a hammer and chisel, tapped that metal out of the way. If we look up at the holes, I believe this side will be easier than the other side. There's no fuel lines in the way. There's hole number one, there is hole number two. There's hole number three. 
The motor mounts are now in. That was so easy and uneventful. I didn't even video this part. The frame has been wiped down with paint thinner. I got the fans blowing on it right after lunch. We're going to start spraying it. So I just stuck some primer on the frame. As soon as that dries, we'll put some black on it. And I think I'm going to take this off make sure it's sealing good behind there while we're waiting for the paint to dry. It's another primer should be dry. It's time to squirt on some black behind this plate. I couldn't get the plate off. That one nut right there would not come off. So I leaned it back. I put a piece of gasket in there. Now I got all the bolts tight. So just to the pressure washer, clean off the transmission and back of the engine. You can see there, 5.7 liter. On the front, it's really cool. It says 327. Let me show you a clip of that. And then over here, we're trying to clean out these fuel lines. With the pressure washer. So I ran the wire deeper in that small pipe, and then I changed tips on the pressure washer. Watch this. So I've got the engine on standby. I've got to get a nut for this transmission mount. We'll get that tomorrow. Once I get that, get that back on, I'll be ready to put the engine in place. Meanwhile, I'm back in the back again working on the hitch, and I've got it right where I want it, exactly where I want it. And then I took a piece of soapstone and trace where this piece gets welded on. I also trace where I need to drill three holes. So last night I finished welding up the hitch. The only thing I have to do now is three holes there, three holes here, and put it in place. The last time I did a hitch install, they said a bunch of extra hardware. I'm gonna use that on this hitch. I've got it welded here, welded all under there. So I just drilled three holes here and three holes here, getting ready for the hitch. So the hitch is now fully installed. I got three bolts over there, three bolts over here. Everything is tight. Now I need to do a wiring harness. Here's the engine. I've got the floor all swept up, blown out, clean, ready to go. There's the lift. I get this engine in place. I just went to the store and bought two nuts to go on the transmission mount. That's those. So here on the passenger side, and I've got the motor mount mostly installed. I've got a washer and a nut to go. And I've got it slid all the way forward. That slides the engine all the way back, I'm trying to get as much clearance as possible between the water pump and the radiator. That's my thought. I just got to tighten up these bolts, then we're going to run over to the other side and do the same thing. So the manifold is now removed. There is the header that's going to take its place. And good news, I don't think I've ever had aluminum heads before. These are aluminum heads. The passenger side header is sitting in place. It looks great. There's a little clearance issue here. That's not going to hurt anything. And I need the heat resistant boots on this side also. Other than that, good to go. So I'm trying to get this engine in the truck, but there's some things that's easier to do before you get it in the truck. Hooking up the oil pressure gauge. I just bought this piece. I've got that piece. I've got this hose. I need to make a plate that blocks off the EGR junk. Just made this EGR block off plate out of diamond plate. Just getting ready to drop this thing in and I've got this plate covering the air conditioning compressor holes and I've got the EGR blocked off. It's time to drop it in. Breaking news and what you just missed, all the motor mounts are in place, all the bolts are in place. I gotta put one nut on here, I've gotta tighten up all the bolts. Then we're gonna go underneath and tighten up the transmission mount to the cross member. Will a cherry picker lift up the whole front of a truck? Let's see. So I just cleaned the grease off the cross member, then I hit it with a sander. I did have to customize one hole here with the drill press. We're going to use one bolt instead of two. That's the only way it's going to work. Okay, today's mission was engine sitting in place, bolted down. I've even got a header trying to sneak in. Motor mount good, on, tight. Same thing on this side. If we go underneath, let's look at the transmission. The cross member was cleaned and painted. It is bolted in place. The transmission mount is all tightened down. Anyway, on this side, the only thing left to do, I got to do a little bit of clearance right here, a little tap tap. 
here's my exhaust gaskets it's a circle versus a d-shape but it's going to seal just great on the other side i've got the header sitting in place had the little tapping over here just a little bit of tapping and I had to get rid of this shifter linkage so i'm not gonna have a column shift anymore i have to put a shifter down the floor anyway we are getting close so good news the passenger side header is in place i've got two bolts tightened up i think i'll take the grinder and cut off a little bit of this aluminum plate but i took the what was this big piece of rebar and that sledge and I beat back on the firewall a little bit and then I took this big crowbar and that 4 before and I pried up on it some so there is clearance for the header I just want to clearance a little bit right there on that aluminum so there's a floor jack underneath applying pressure there's a block of wood my little crowbar here and pry it up and get clearance And that's probably good enough. So I'm pleased with that clearance. The driver's side had more clearance. Now I think the passenger side has more clearance. And less stuff in the way. Brakes and shifters and whatever else. I think we're going to go with that. Once we get the header installed, the next big thing, i got to get some heat shields to put around all these wires. So today's mission was exhaust. i got the headers in place. i got clearance around the headers. They're good to go. i got to figure out how to do the O2 sensors. I just bought these two nuts. I think I'm going to sand those down a little bit, weld those to my exhaust, and then just bolt the nuts, I mean the O2 sensors, into those nuts. Then also bought some grade 5 bolts. Who wants to use those old rusty ones? I don't. And then on my tube for the passenger side, it's pretty good length. The driver's side, it was a little bit short, so I bought this piece. I'm going to 45 down a little bit lower, and then I can start going with my real pipe. So just welded on the 45, that looks pretty great. Up next, I'm going to grind down this angle a little bit on this nut, and i got to get this welded on to make a home for the O2 sensor. I'll probably crawl underneath and mark where I want to put it. I'm going to go drill a hole and weld on the nut. Okay, I've got the nut sitting in place. I've got a three quarter inch bolt tightened down to flatten out the surface and hold the nut in place. Now we just gotta weld it on. So good news, I got this drive shaft in place. Now I know what universal joint to get for the back, but in the front, it's actually two inches too long. So I'll take this one back out and I gotta find a drive shaft that's two inches shorter than whatever this one is. Looks like I'm going to need a drive shaft that is about 52 and a half inches long. Alright, write that number down somewhere. Drive shaft update. I have both universal joints. There's one already in the transmission yoke. And this is called a conversion. It's Ford. This is Chevrolet. And if you happen to be building an S10 with a 700R4 short wheel base, I found this out of Explorer, unknown year. I would guess about a 96. Anyway, the conversion universal joint. Bigger on this side, small on that side, that's the Ford, that's the GM. I'm uh, going to go in here, if you want the numbers off of it, 3-3130. Uh, this side takes the external clips, this side takes the internal clips, and then I go right to our rear end. So here's my junkyard drive shaft with new universal joints. This came out of an Explorer, that came out of an Astro van. Now it's going into an S10. Next time you see it, it'll be installed. And I believe it was about $18. I have to go back and look at the receipt. I don't know for sure. Less than $20. Uh, update. This shifter was brand new and it was free. TCI, it's a ratchet shifter. I'm not a big fan of ratchet shifters probably because I've never had one. It'll do three speed, it'll do four speed. I've got a four speed so that is handy. Even comes with a cable, all that hardware. Can't beat that. I had to go pick up an engine and deliver an engine. I got the shifter for free. So here on the inside of the truck, I'm checking out the shifter versus the bench seat. I was looking at getting some bucket seats, but this is already in the truck. It's free. It's installed. The only thing it needs is a seat cover. It's very comfortable. Anyway, uh, the shifter's sitting here. There's like a half inch of clearance down in first gear. I think it's going to work out. Anyway, uh, my gauges, not those gauges. I've got these gauges. These are Stuart Warner. I've got an amp, oil pressure, water temperature. These came out of my original Camaro. When I sold the car, I told the guy, I said, i got to keep my gauges. He's like, all right, keep them. I'm thinking they might go in here. I've even got a Stuart Warner volt gauge. I might could somehow incorporate an attack ready to go in. I've got to give my gas pedal a little bit of a tune-up. So I just took the gas pedal out of the truck. I bent the rod a little bit. Now it opens wide open throttle. This oil pressure line, it's hooked up on the engine. I gotta go inside the truck. And inside the truck, I just mounted these three gauges. That looks a little more race car-ish. 
I also have a stereo that needs to go in that hole. And I have this Pioneer, which already has the adapter, or this JVC. Whichever one works the best, I don't care. So here on the truck, I've been working on the back half here lately. I got the fuel tank in, the fuel pumps in. I got most of the lines hooked up. The rest of the lines come after I put the bed on. Trap shafts in. Oh, on the exhaust, everything from the cutout forward is done. So from here back, I've got to make a decision. I've got this one flow master that turns into two. I got a magna flow. I got old rusty flow master. I got old rusty flow master. I got chrome tips. I don't know. I'm thinking what's on there will be best, but it's not made for, it was a full-size truck, not made for an S10. So I might cut it off here, cut it off there, and just have it dumped behind the rear end. I really feel like that would sound good. So that's what it would look like if we put a lift kit on it. We're going to go the other way and put a lowering kit and make it sit level. Anyway, I've got it jacked up so that I can get the starter on. Last night I got the shifter hooked up. I've got the oil filter already on. I've got to hook up the emergency brake cable. And other than that, I think we're done underneath. Not a whole lot of clearance, but it's in there. So here on the parking brake, I'm loosening this nut, trying to make this cable reach to the other side. So the emergency brake cable is hooked back together. I joined it together right there and it'll help hold up the exhaust. Hopefully we only use it at the boat ramp. So now we can check off under the truck. I just put the starter on. I got the emergency brake cable hooked back up. We get to come up to the top up here to the wiring. Oh boy, my favorite part. A bunch of wires have been cut off there. Hopefully they're not important. All of this octopus. The good news on the LT1, all the wires are marked. Tachometer, 12 volt constant, 12 volt switch, neutral safety switch. That's about how long I've been working on this truck. Now we got to find the core support. So on the wiring, these main big wires here, there's a pink wire. That's going to be switched hot. These two red wires, they go up to here. They go down to the alternator. I already hooked that up. Then I made this red wire. It comes over to the positive on the battery. The black wire, which goes back to this group, goes to the negative on the battery. And then this purple, which has some paint on it, it goes down to the starter solenoid. If we go inside, 
Inside the truck, if we turn the key on, we get a seatbelt light and the gas gauge goes down to nothing. Other than that, that's all we have so far. So it should be the 12 volt switch should go to this pink wire here. And then this is probably a oil pressure for the in the dash. Uh, constant 12 volt, that's going to go up to here. Switched, already said where they go. Tachometer, neutral safety switch. It's not going to be too bad, hopefully. Alright, I've got two LED pods. When you turn the key on, one lights up. When you hit the starter, the other one lights up. I've got a couple cans of satin black. Let's see what we can do. So I just came back from the store. I think I have everything I need to start except for gasoline and transmission cooler lines, our antifreeze, our transmission fluid, our engine oil. I got a couple options on battery cables. I may take one back. Uh, let's see, power steering fluid, a couple cans of spray paint. I've got some glue for the weather strip and it's falling down. So on my battery cables, I've got six foot of four gauge or 56 inches of two gauge. I'm kind of leaning towards the two gauge. I'm gonna open it up and see what it looks like. So on this aluminum plate, I'm about to mount the computer here. I think I'll polish it up before we mount it. I just mounted this. This holds the computer. The computer is going to go just like that. And I got a couple things to mount over here. So I temporarily put in the radiator support and the front fender so I can put in the battery box. That way I can cut the battery cables to the right length. So I've got this big battery cable. It's too alt going down to the starter. It reaches up to the positive, but it's too long. So I'm going to cut it off here, put this end on it. Then this portion can become the negative, and it only has to go right to there. i got to find my cutter. So I've got the cable marked. Here goes nothing. Now this becomes our negative. This will be our positive with this cable. And I'm going to use what used to be for the heater hoses. That's now going to be for the battery cable. Now i got to figure out what to do with this power steering reservoir. They're fighting for space and the battery's winning right now. So the box said 100% copper. That looks 100% copper to me. Here's the update on the negative cable. It's ready to bolt on. So I just finished both battery cables. The negative goes from here to there. The positive goes from here down to the solenoid. And then the red wire, it was so long I had to cut some off. The black wire was just long enough. I've got a few things to mount, a few wires to hook up. We'll clean up all of this mess and the wire part we can check it off. My computer headquarters central control station has all been mounted up. That's done. Now we've got to clean up all this wiring. So here on the driver's side we've got these two fuel rails. I'm going to pop this little line off. That's what the factory had. I gotta get this hose off and put my hose on. I got this fuel filter and I got this transmission filter. We're gonna try to get both those on before we fire it up. When I open the door, I hear an alarm come on. We turn the key on. It says it's got a little bit of gas in it. Ooh, starter kicks in. That's the first time I've heard that. Got the weather stripping in place. Now I just gotta find something to hold pressure on it. 
So I've got the truck up on ramps front and back. I'm going to crawl underneath it. I've got this new bender. I've got these two brake lines. This is 5 16 quarter inch thread here. And then we've got double flares. We're going to try to make some transmission lines. So I've got this wire. It's roughly bent to the shape I need. Now i got to transfer that to the tubing. So this is what I have so far on line number one. I need two that are just alike, except for this one's going to be about an inch and a half lower hooking to the transmission. This is what my lines are looking like. So for the radiator, I just came back at the parts store. You can't go in there and say I got an 89 S10, a 92 LT1. I need some radiator hoses. So I went and looked at all the radiator hoses. This one is the right size. It's got a bunch of bends. I'm thinking I can take this, cut it somewhere, and make the top and bottom radiator hose out of one hose. Uh, for That's, by the way, this was Silverado Avalanche upper hose. And then this hose for the heater, there's two that come out of the water pump. I'm thinking this loop will do for both of those. This was a Honda Accord, 98 through 2002 Honda Accord. So Accord Silverado. So my heater hose bypasses in. It's completely clamped down here, clamped down there. So on the radiator, I got it sitting in place. I think this is right where I want it. I got to make some brackets for the top. Anyway, on the radiator hoses, this little heater hose, it does touch the back of the fan, but it's very light pressure. I don't think it's going to hurt anything. And if I take this hose and if I lay it just like this, kind of eyeball it in line with that, eyeball it in line with that, give it a little bit of twist. The goal is to make it look just right with no kinks. So I think if I cut it here. All right, so I just cut the hose. If it goes kind of like that, I'm going to go cut it one more time right about here. It is trying to make a little kink here, but I have a plan. So we're getting close to having it running, and it seems like every time I make a list, the list keeps growing. Anyway, if we hit the key, temperature gauge works, oil pressure gauge already hooked up. I'm still debating on using the amp meter or putting a voltmeter in to be determined. So I need a top radio support bracket and all I have is this bed frame. Let's make it happen. And now once we drill five holes, this is done. So quick update, this came off of an OBS, there's going to be a wire here when you turn the key on, that'll get hot. All these get hot if I've got several wires that need switchable 12 volts. This one came on the truck, this is constant 12 volts, this one goes straight down to the battery. Also at the junkyard I picked up this heat shield, it was laying on the ground, they didn't even charge me for it. That's going on the tail shaft of the transmission where it's routed with the exhaust. So I've got this painless electric fan relay kit, I'm going to put this sensor into the head here. The relay kit's going to go about right there, it's going to go to the fans which are here, and then the hot wire comes up to this new block. I've got electric fans all wired up. If you want to hear those, I'll short it out for you. So I've started cleaning up the wiring. I've got this gray flex tube covering up a lot of that. I've got another piece of gray flex tube. There's still more to do up here, and I've got these nice black covers. They're going to cover a lot of the engine wires up here. Uh, up next, i got to get some oil in it. The oil is now topped off and I've got the black covers on the engine. That looks better. So I had this old cap on for clearance reasons, but with the new bracket, the new cap might work. Let's try it out. And let's get some radiator fluid in it. Look at that. The new one works. So I think the system is all sealed up. I gotta get an overflow canister and I just block this off with a little piece of hose and a lug nut. Two hose clamps. I'm gonna keep filling it. So on the to-do list, i got to figure out why the fuel pump's not coming on. 
Uh, the transmission lines still have to be hooked up. I got cans under there now to catch fluid. I'm trying to see which one's pumping out. I still got to put this fender on. But I think I'm going to turn it over and see what it sounds like. And I'm watching the oil pressure gauge. It's going up. So I've just drained all the transmission fluid out of the transmission, clean the pan, put a new filter in, new gasket, pan's back on. So what's left to do before we can drive it, I've got to put the fender on, I've got to put the bumper on. Actually, we can drive it without the bumper. But what I just did, I wired up the coil. I've got this hot wire coming out from the battery. That'll probably turn into a switch on the dash. And then on the fuel, this blue line goes over to that computer, comes over to the original fuel wire, now the pump comes on, we're going to hit the key and see if it'll run. So before we fire it back up, let's refill the reservoir, power steering reservoir. Remember, there's a spark plug wire off. Stand by. So I think I'll bring the other fan over, try to blow some of that smoke out. We need to get it off the ramp, see if it'll go in gear. And then while we're at it, I'm going to look at the transmission dipstick, check the power steering fluid again. There is still some power steering fluid on the transmission dipstick tube. The green, that is your speed sensor. The orange is your neutral park, neutral safety switch. We're not using those right now. Good news, I just opened the exhaust cut out. We're going to see what it sounds like. I've been waiting a long time to hear that. So the goal is test drive time tomorrow. Seems like every time I make a list, there's always 10 or more things to do. Anyway, I want to knock out the hood release cable first before I get the fender on, then the fender, then the hood. Here's the before and after. We are underneath looking for big drips. I see no major leaks. There is the heat shield already installed. So yesterday I found this old school topper. I like it, kind of a farm truck look. 
Make it look like a sleeper. Nobody's paid a V8 in something that looks like this. Anyway, may go do a little camping in it soon. That might be episode two, three, four, I don't know. And I also picked up this transmission cooler. Got it installed last night. Now I need to put some more fluid in it or run it through this, check the levels, get the fender on, then we go for a drive. It is finally time to paint the driver's side fender. Probably do the fender well, the inside. I don't know if I'll get to the bottom yet. I'm in a hurry to get this thing on so we can go for a ride. The fender has been sanded down and clean. Next up, paint. So I've been working on this truck for a long time. There's been a lot of work, a lot of editing on this video. Uh, if you want to show it some love, hit the like button. Anyway, uh, I want to wrap it up, and there's a car show this weekend. I'm thinking if I can push myself by next Saturday, today's Sunday by next Saturday, if I can have this thing a little more complete, you know, like hood for a car show, I feel like it needs a grill, it needs some headlights, front bumper, and to me it's ready. Anyway, uh, budget build, I was digging around the garage and I found this headlight. It's old, it's dirty, but it's glass, we'll wash it up, we're going to put that in. Then i got to scavenge around some of the parts vehicles, try to find the other one. Get the headlight bezels on, the grill in, then we get that bumper on. Okay, this has been pretty much top secret. I'm going to go ahead and reveal now. This truck is going to be a Z28 tribute truck. This is off my first car, my Camaro. It's a 1969. It's going to go right about there. And then the junkyard donated this one. This is off like an 80s Model Z28. That's going on the glove box of this truck. I went ahead and put the hood on. It's lined up pretty good. Other than the front bumper, the front end is done. Check that off the list. Testing the charging system and testing the gauge. Uh, to put the front bumper on, I'm going to take this back off, which requires taking the grill back off. But it's okay because i got a cordless drill. I've got an impact wrench. It'll be quick. So the front bumper's in place. There's two bolts here, two bolts there. There's two that go into the frame. These are 13 millimeter. The other two are 15 millimeter. And something to think about, if I want to put a spoiler on this, I'm going to have to take the headlight bezels off, the grill out, this green piece comes off, the bumper comes off, then the spoiler goes on. I should have got a spoiler the other day when I was at the junkyard. So here in front of the truck, I've got this pretty chrome bull bar. I thought I'd never have a use for it, but here on the truck, one big holdup, the air filter. This is what the air filter looks like. The guy before me had it just taped on there. It looked pretty terrible. I'm thinking this pipe would fit inside of that and then either use this or buy a new something that fits onto that pipe. So I'm going to try to cut an angle out, have it come up, you know, cold air into this area.
And here's a shot of the custom chrome cold air system. I just gotta find a filter for it, make some kind of mount, and that system's done. This is door panel before and after cleaning. Let's go get this one installed. Like it was made for it. So the homemade custom cold air kit Looks like it was made for it. Love it. And then downstairs, I've got an attraction bar trying it on. I like it, but I think it's going to be too low once we get the lowering blocks in. So I've got my list here, and on my list, most of it's been checked off already. The air filter is mostly done. The rear bumper, i got to screw on some trim. The tail lights, i got to butt, butt splice some uh, wires together. And the passenger door window, I bought this just now to fix that. If we jump over to the future list, I can't wait. I've got a seat cover, an $8 seat cover. And I went ahead and got the lowering blocks. Two inch lowering blocks, these are gonna go on the back. That's gonna make it sit level. Let's do a measure real quick. Then we're gonna jump on this window. Then we're gonna get the seat belt on. We gotta get the door panel on. Wire up the tail lights. Finish the air filter, rear bumper. Check everything off, get this video out. So in the back of the truck, if I measure from the top of the tire to the bottom of the fender, it looks like seven and seven eighths. Let's go measure the front. And then right here in the front, it's measuring four and seven eighths. So that's three inches difference. I bought two inch lowering blocks. I should have bought three inch lowering blocks. We're gonna be going back to the store before we do the lowering kit. And by the way, the front lowering kit was the V8 engine when we put that in. Here's what the seat looks like before. Hopefully the blanket covers it all. So this is what a seat cover looks like. It fits the whole seat. I gotta cut holes for the seat covers, get some kind of string to tie it on with. And the good news is if it gets dirty, we take it out and wash it. If the truck breaks down and it's cold, we've always got a blanket with us. Works for me. So on the window, there's a little hole here. This clips into that hole, then it stays in the channel better. There's also one down somewhere in this area. I'll try to show it to you. Okay, final updates. This bracket is in. I got two zip ties. I got it cleaned up. I even cleaned up here a little bit. Around here on the other side, I've still got this drying. And I think I'll run to the store now and trade out the two inch lowering blocks for some three inch lowering blocks. So on the tab, the glue seems to be dry. I took the vice grips off. I'm going to put it into the channel, see if it holds, see if we can go up and down with the window. Then we'll get the door panel on. All the way down. Now I'm going to cram the door panel on. We'll be done with that side. So now the window goes up and down. The door panel is on. The seat cover is on. The other door panel is all clean on the inside. Got the tack mount. There's the gauges. I like this interior. There is one thing I need to do. Z28 emblem. Let me hurry up and do that, and then before the sun's completely down, I gotta go shoot an outro. Looks like we'll be doing rear bumper trim in episode two. Over here in future episodes, we can go ahead and check off seat cover and lowering blocks. So here on the glove box, I just drilled four little holes. Now the Z28 emblem pops right into place. And I think I'll get some black RVT to put behind it to hold it there really good. I like it. All right, guys, that's the whole build, the whole story on Charles as far as episode one. In episode two, we've got a whole list of things to do. That video should be coming soon. And I thank you so much for watching to the end. Either you're a true fan of the channel or a true fan of S10s. Either way, I appreciate you watching. Don't forget the like button and leave me a comment. Tell me what you think.